Okay, let's add some depth and dimension to a lead vocal using only Cubase plugins. Or if you don't work in Cubase, you're probably gonna find the equivalent in the DAW you work with. So let's start this one up. Without any effect, vocals can be pretty uncomfortable to listen to when they are fully dry. They're gonna sound up front and they're gonna sound on natural. Sometimes this is exactly the effect you want, but in 95% of the time, I need something more. So the first thing I can do here is to add a doubler effect to the vocal. In this case, I only have one vocal recording, okay? So I'm stuck with this vocal. There's no double recording of the same vocal part. So what I did on this one is I uh, created a new audio channel and uh, I just copy paste the same vocal recording. And on that uh, copy, I inserted a plugin called Cloner. Now you can use an FX channel track if you want to and route uh, the original signal into, but uh, what I want to do here is to uh, add Cloner, add a bit of doubling effect to the vocal, to the copy, without having the same processing as the original. Okay, so I'm gonna add even more differences compared to the lead vocal track, okay? So on this copy of the vocal, I added two voices within Cloner. And uh, I just added those parameters that you can copy on your own if you wish to. Or you can also play around uh, by adding more voices if this is what you're looking for. If I blend this uh, with my original vocal, this is what I get. Trouvé par la rose et je fuis vers l'infiniment petit Le regard tourné vers lui so what I'm going to do next here is to add some color to that doubler effect by adding some saturation. And to do so, I'm going to use Magneto MK2, which works very well for light saturation. Uh, so my saturation is to the max, and I'm using dual mode, and this is how it sounds like. par la rose et je fuis all right, let's uh, listen in the context of the mix, and I'm going to balance the doubler with the lead vocal. This adds a bit more width to the lead vocal. And the trick is not to add too much. I don't want to hear that effect too much. I want to feel it more than anything else. But when it's on, I just get a very nice vocal that doesn't seem to be stuck in the center of the stereo image which is quite nice. I usually like to do this by recording several takes of the same vocal and pan those extra recordings left and right. That gives me a more natural effect. But in the case like this, where I only have one vocal to work with, this is a very good way to go. So that is the doubler effect by using cloner. Another way to add a bit more depth and dimension to a vocal is to simply use a reverb. In this case, I'm gonna use a plate found in Reverence. It's actually a very, very good reverb uh, to work with. And this is what I get with the reverb only. Okay, so a few things here that I did to make this reverb sound a bit more transparent and not too distractive. First of all, I added a bit of pre-delay to the reverb and that will make the initial transient of the vocal dry and not be affected by the reverb. So the reverb will basically start 35 milliseconds later than the initial vocal transient, okay? And you can play around with this. Some will like to, uh, to set that pre-delay according to the tempo of the song, but you can also go by ear and just add a few milliseconds and that will be good also. So that is one option. Another option to keep my vocal up front is to use sidechain compression on the reverb itself, like I have right here. So I have a compressor uh, that is set up to be a sidechain to the lead vocal. So the lead vocal sends a signal straight into that compressor, but since that compressor is set up to 
sidechain, it will only compress when the lead vocal comes in, like this. I'm gonna overdo it. So this will tame down the reverb when the vocal comes in. And you can experiment with the amount of release uh, time. And for the attack, I tend to go as fast of an attack as possible. And that works pretty well. You can also combine this with a bit of pre-delay if you wish to listen to what sounds best uh, for you. So this is also going to work well to keep the vocal up front, but still have a very nice reverb tail. Uh, but one of the most important thing that I did that I always do when I work with a reverb is to add a high pass and a low pass filter on the incoming signal going into the reverb. But you can also apply this within the reverb plugin itself if there's an EQ available on the plugin, like I have here in Reverence. And this will apply an EQ on the reverb at the output of the reverb. And that will add lots of transparency when working with a reverb, especially on a vocal. Just pay attention when I bypass the filters, how much more space the reverb taste and the reverb tends to sound a bit more muddy and not as clear and transparent so let's listen to this again and i'm going to bring back the filters okay in the context of the mix So I love filtering uh, reverbs just to add more reverb effect to a vocal without having the reverb to overwhelm <laughs> the mix, okay, and give less definition to my vocal and to the, the full mix, you know? So this is a good way to go. So if I bypass uh, the compressor and also the filters, So this is a good way to work with a vocal reverb that will work for most of mixes. Now, something else you can do to add more depth and dimension to a vocal is to add a slap back delay. What a slap back delay is, is very simple. It's a short amount of delay that will add space around your vocals. It's going to kind of detach the vocal uh, from being too dry. Okay, so it's just going to add like a layer of dimension to your vocal. So let's try this one up by only using the stereo delay in Cubase. So the way I set it that up, very simple. The feedback level is going to be at 0%. I just want to have one repeat and that's it. I don't want the, like the delay to repeat itself um, on and on. I want to keep that to only one repeat. So feedback is at zero. The uh, amount of delay time, I set that up uh, manually, okay, in milliseconds. And the goal, like I'm using a stereo delay. In this case, you can use a mono delay also, if you wish, there's no rules. Uh, in this case, I'm using a stereo one. So one side is at uh, 140 milliseconds, uh, the other one at 175. The goal is not to have the same amount of time delays on the left and the right. Um, and that can vary. Those numbers can vary depending on the tempo of the song I'm mixing. Uh, now, the panning also, I can fully pan the left and right um, delays. And in this case, I just went like, you know, kind of uh, amid panning at around 50%. And I also have some filtering going on straight from the plugin itself. Again, I'm filtering out uh, everything below 480 hertz on one side and approximately the same thing on the left and same for the top end. So I'm just kind of bring that down to a more, you know, kind of a radio effect on this uh, delay. So let's have a quick listen of the delay itself. <laughs> So it has a very cool filtered sound, uh, which I kind of like. And if I blend this with uh, the uh, the lead vocal, this is what I get. And again, just a matter of balance. Extravagant. 
d'une couleur sans eux. Okay, I can bring the, the delay time even closer, a bit faster if I want to. I can also sync it to the tempo of the uh, uh, of the song at a sixteenth of a note, which usually is a value that will work well in most cases. But what I do, I make one side a sixteenth of a note and the other side the same, but in triplets. And this is what I get. Trouvé par la rose et je fuis vers... So let's have a listen to the context of the mix. And again, you balance that to your taste. Sometimes you like this type of slapback delay as an effect on its own, so you want it to be noticeable. Some other times, it's just to add a bit more dimension to the vocal and just feel it more than hearing it. So this is up to you and the song you're mixing. Next on the list is the stereo long delay that I like to use. And there are several options I can work with in Cubase, but this time around, uh, I decided to try the multi-tap delay, but I'm not even gonna use taps. I'm gonna use that delay powerhouse in a very simple way uh, by only using the delay sync. However, I'm gonna add some effects that are part of this plugin. Now, this is a powerful plugin. There's lots you can do with this plugin, but this is how I work with it for this purpose, which does the job pretty well. Uh, now, there's a few things that I did here. An eighth of a note uh, synced is what I'm going to use as the delay time. I'm adding a bit of feedback to have some repeats and uh, I added some effects. So I added a chorus effect, a flanger and a an overdrive. So if I bypass those effects, this is what I'm going to get with this vocal. Par la rose et je fuis vers la Okay, so that is the delay on its own. Okay, a few things here, same as I did with the reverb. I added a high pass filter and a low pass filter to the incoming signal going into that delay. So I'm getting already a filtered out signal to add a delay on. And that will keep my delay to be fully transparent and more manageable within my mix. Uh, then let's add some chorus, flanger, and see how that goes. I love that. I love it because it adds a bit more color uh, to the delay. It's not only like the single type of delay sound we usually get. I'm just adding a bit more character and color by adding those types of effects. Um, and let's, why not add an overdrive on top of that? Sometimes that works, some other times it doesn't. But in this case, I kind of like it. On top of that, there's the ducker that I kind of like to work with also, which will duck the delay when the vocal comes in, a bit like sidechain compression does. Okay, let me bring back the lead vocal because we were just listening to the delay effect on its own. Par la rose et je fuis vers l'infiniment petit, le regard tourné vers... Cool. In the context of the mix. Trouvé par la rose et je fuis vers l'infiniment petit, le regard tourné vers lui. Mon firmament, il brille d'un amour extravagant, d'une couleur sans un me poussant. Now, this type of stereo delay can also be a full replacement to a reverb. And again, that will depend on your taste and also the song you're mixing. So that is the stereo delay that will add lots of depth to your vocal. Next on the list is uh, the vocal throws. Okay, now a vocal throw is a delay that you add on specific lines of the vocal. So it's not always there. It's gonna come on and then it's gonna come back off, but only on specific words or lines of your vocal performance. So in this case, what I did, I have a vocal throw effects channel and there are several ways you can achieve this. Uh, the way I did it right now is uh, very simple. I added the uh, some automation on the send level 
of the uh, the signal going into this delay and the delay i'm using on this one is the cubase ping pong delay set up to a quarter of a note synced there's a good amount of uh, feedback going on and also a high pass and low pass filter uh the spatial is like this is the stereo width of the delay that is set up to around 70 percent and this is how it sounds like on those words here so i have the automation going on on a specific lines out of this recording let me at the same time bring back the other effects the slap back delay uh a bit of a bit of everything you know and we'll see how that goes <laughs> Okay, so if I focus on this, okay, on its own, this is what I get. Okay, so there's the ping pong delay. There's also after this a phaser effect, and this one also goes into a reverb just add a bit more space to the delay you know i don't want that delay to be like fully dry uh, so i'm adding a bit of reverb um, to the tail of that delay to add a bit more space and i'm not adding a lot of reverb so i'm using the mix uh, knob out of the reverb so just to add a bit of space here so that works pretty cool <laughs> There you go. So this is actually very cool, you know, and I love again to just add a bit more color to this type of delay by adding some effects like the phaser, you know, a bit of reverb. You can also add some saturation and stuff like that. You know, lots of plugins that I work with usually like the Echo Boy by Sound Toys um, will have these types of color. There's different types of vintage delay models uh, that will have their own color um, and give you different tones uh, to work with when it comes to delays, which is great. But if you don't have these types of plugins, this is a way you can use your stock plugins out of Cubase or your own DAW to work this out and add a bit more flavor to your delays and reverbs. Now, all of these effects can be used at the same time or not. That depends on what you're looking for. Feel free to experiment with all of this. Now, if you wanna know about setting up your own vocal chain with Cubase plugins, I'm talking about EQ, compression, and so on, you have to watch this video. I'm also gonna leave the link down below. Take care and see you soon. Bye-bye.